Hey maker, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. In today's video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes with me on a photo shoot I'm doing with Cindy's little guys where we are going to shoot her little guys on a faux window sill with a faux lush view backdrop from Replica Surfaces. Let's go. Hello, love. So in this video, we are going to use Cindy's little guys and we are gonna create a faux window slash windowsill setting where we can take product photos of her little guys. So Cindy struggles a little bit and how these are actually displayed in people's homes. And this was an idea that she had. So I went ahead and built, just real quick, built this kind of faux farmhouse window sill type thing. And then of course we have a lush view from Replica Surfaces that we are going to be using. So let's get started. So we are gonna use the Replica in-home studio. I'm gonna take Lush View and I'm just going to pop it into the back. I have the studio put right up against this window. I do not have direct sunlight coming into this window. This is a south facing window. My direct sun is coming from this side over here right now. So we already technically have kind of a layer of diffusion. The reason I'm setting it up this way is because we do have shadows in this backdrop. Whenever we're using faux backdrops, especially that show like a setting or a scene, we wanna make sure that we're replicating the shadows that are in it to make it as realistic as possible. So our shadows are kind of coming this way, emulating that our light is coming in this way. So we're going to try to replicate that light with the little guys. What we're gonna try first is we're actually going to take this faux windowsill and we're going to start kind of out here with it the reason i'm not going right up against the backdrop like this is because a lot of times backdrops they aren't crisp clear and super sharp and when you come too close to a backdrop and you aren't when you don't have enough depth to really blur because that's what we need we need depth space between our product and our backdrop to create blur, then you start to kind of see the pixelation in the actual backdrop. Now, while these backdrops are super, super high quality, they aren't meant for you to necessarily get right up on them. And what happens is you'll see kind of these little black speckle dots. Let me show you quick. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull this a little bit forward. Now, what we wanna make sure of is we only pull it forward enough to where our camera angle is going to actually allow us to capture the product in a way where it shows its features best, which we're gonna turn that, that way. The eyes are upward, so really an upward angle is gonna work best because that's where some of the detail is. So kind of a 45 degree angle, but we also wanna make sure that we're creating a little bit of that distance so we can blur that background. Okay, so we're gonna have to kind of play with the depth of that to make sure, because if we shoot too high of an angle, you can see this portion back here and we don't want that. We want it to look seamless. So we gotta figure out at what point do we need to stop so that we have the right angle and we've got a seamless look with it? Now that's pretty cute and adorable. I'm try to go, because if I go a little higher, we're kind of missing, we're getting this part and we're getting the back part. So we've got to watch that. So I'm gonna go a little lower here. Oh my 
gosh, this is too freaking cute. Okay, so we're emulating that windowsill. Let me turn this a little bit here so you can see how much distance we have. This is probably about three inches or so. So we're not right up on that backdrop so we don't see the little speckles. Now I wanna also mention that we're going to make sure we have centered this little puppy in between those, that frame, and this little puppy in that frame to make sure we are getting the best results and making our lines super even. Okay, I'm gonna scoot just a little bit forward so I can get a little bit of a higher angle. Going to make sure I'm kind of centering those. And they are seriously just too cute. Pull forward again. And go a little lower here. Okay. Now I'm really not getting a lot of, of shadowing. I'm not having like a super bad issue with that. So we're not going to use any kind of diffusion in the window. As I mentioned, my son's coming in over here. So we're just not having, having an issue with that. Um, and however, going to close these lines up. Right, over here and try to soften that and see if we get a little bit of a different result. Which really we can't actually see the shadowing now, so it's not on the actual faux backdrop, so it's not like a huge, huge deal, but this is just going to help ensure that our actual image doesn't have all the fuzzy grainy of the windowsill. So just kind of getting that, that balance. And if I were to do one a little guy at a time. And I'm trying to take that right angle. Let me show you the difference between that and then having it right up against the window. It just looks a little more realistic there. And then we'll swap him out. His cute little face. Now I am going to, he's got a little bit of a reflection on his eye. So I am going to put this in the window to kind of diffuse that reflection. And the reason we're more so seeing it with him versus our other little guy is because it's darker. So where we are probably getting more of that white reflection on him, on his white, we've got a brown face on this little guy, causing him to do that white reflection. God, that's just too stinking cute. I'll do him one more time. A little more close up like I did the other little guy. Oh, perfection. Check out the final results. <laughs>Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.